Grace Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm Mike the Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. Uh, TNT. Yo. Did you see that the other day there was a uh, stand up an- Amazon employee? He, was ma- he had a package to deliver. Okay. And he was not going to let it not be delivered. Okay. There was a police standoff. Okay. And there was a video of this mother effer just walking right up. To, like, he's like walking through the parking lot, like walking past all these cop cars. You see everyone kind of like looking at him, pointing at him, walking straight to the goddamn house. There's like cops all over the place. They finally eventually like intercept him and they take the package from him and go drop, put it on the porch or whatever. This dude was just like, oh, whatever, dude. <laughs> Yo, if you think about, like, the origins of, like, the mail system in this country and you think about, like, the Pony Express and, like, what those guys had to go through to get the mail delivered, like, riding on a horse to deliver mail halfway across the country and, like, uh, you know, attacks by, like... I don't know, like bandits. bandits yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you would call them. The pirates. Back. They wouldn't have been yeah. pirates because they're not on the water. Land pirates. Wait, is that the only difference between a bandit and a pirate? Is the one's <laughs> on the water and one's on the land? I think so. Because <laughs> they call I've, them porch pirates, right? I've never, I've wow. never thought about that. They're basically the same thing. Uh, I'm the captain now. Yo, like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so start stated, calling like land pirates right land pirates yeah anyways i'm sorry so but yes like if you think about how hard it probably was to get the mail system yeah. working in america yeah, 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 yeah and everyone just takes it for granted and then and then you look at it today and the amazon guys walking through the battlefield to give you your <laughs> six pack he probably of deodorant. Just didn't want his demerit from amazon he's about to get fired because he <laughs> peed too long yo so i did did you see the uh there was a young lady that uh like Gave, Did a whole like yeah. coming to truth video about Amazon. She's what? like, "This is the whatever." I don't remember no, all was, of it, but it wasn't it. Yeah, it was something about the truck and about like if she has to like keep her hands on the wheel and like there's like distracted driving if it catches her looking at her phone. There's a camera in the truck and stuff. Yeah, and it so, like does if you like you, she speeds up too fast or she's falling too close or she's yeah. looking at her phone or yeah, she yeah. said something. There was it was just a bunch of wild ass shit. Like if I in like but sometimes if I go to buckle my seatbelt or do something, I get demerited and they. Yeah. Because yeah, they think I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is why would you want to work with like AI Big Brother watching you all day? Yeah, that's eh, a little much, right? But is it, it's probably like the I don't know, is that the easy job or is that the job you want? Well, I but it doesn't from seem what I like hear, a bad I've read gig. and saw articles and stuff, they're really like almost like fascist about like their Amazon drivers. Like it's like how fast they're going. Did they take enough stops? Like how long did they take out of the truck? Like, but you, you gotta be, you have to be. Yeah. Cause people's safety is at risk because they deliver anywhere. So bad neighborhood, good neighborhood, they deliver anywhere. Anything can happen. The country's in a freaking shambles well, and they're anyway. completely on their own. So they could go exactly. rogue. Like it's, it's, I, I get the monitoring and their targets. What? Oh yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, oh yeah, because you have a truck full of like merch, and you're just like some random chick. Exactly. Yeah, you're like in the hood, and like you got like 10k worth of stuff in your truck. Exactly. And, like yeah, there's a crackhead who's like, yeah. oh, I bet there's a, a a Nintendo Switch in there somewhere. Exactly. So I honestly I appreciate the the degree of uh, safety features that they do keep. You don't want those people getting into accidents and getting hijacked. You don't want anybody jumping in a truck and stealing it. You don't want the you don't want the employee getting hurt. So so it's necessary, but it is insane the amount of stuff they have to go through. And I need to know. I hope they're being compensated well enough oh, for having I mean, your private. Like, you go to pick your nose. Do you get a demerit? Well, right. And that's the thing. What if you're, like, coughing? Oh, I took the hand off the wheel, put my hand oh, over my mouth. Like Demerited. Yeah. Or, like, oh, you were going 37 miles an hour in the 35 zone. Or you took three minutes to drop that package off. It should have taken you 86 seconds. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't like being micromanaged by a human. Mm. Let alone being micromanaged by a computer. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like how many demerits until I just can't drive anymore. And see, and that feeds into the the whole uh, myth, myth. I wouldn't say myth. I would say uh, the thing that was going around about people peeing in water bottles and stuff because they. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they, they couldn't they it. couldn't take time to go to the bathroom because they would have got demerited or whatever they call them strikes or exactly. whatever. Exactly. You know, it's a uh, well. And here's the part that I think really like kind of kind of gets me about all that it's like i when i used to work in a call center Mm -hmm. back when i was like in my 20s 
you know, we had all those metrics, like how many calls per hour are you taking? Like how often do you sit unavailable? You know, they keep, then that's how they coach you or whatever at your job. And like, it is, and I feel like in this, and this was like the best example I've ever had of like being like the most asinine thing. So I remember, I will never forget this. So we had a calls per hour goal or something. Right. And I remember like every week we would have our coaching sessions and I would, and I went to like sit down with, with the, with the leader and you talk about your stats, oh, and, like you Jesus. know, where you can improve and which is mind numbing in its own right. Yeah. I definitely shoot but, myself. So on she camera. brought to me and she goes, you know, I want to talk to you about getting your calls per hour up a little bit. I was one full call per hour over the goal. And we had a literal coaching session about how I needed to get my calls per hour up. I was like, I'm already one full call over the goal and we're having a coaching session on how I can get more calls per hour. And coached. I feel like that is the epitome of the problem of working off stat-based merits. Yes. Because you're like, oh, you're doing so well. We don't have something to work on, but we're going to tell you to work on something you're already overachieving on. I was <laughs> like, I was like, bitch, get out of here. That is what you call poor management because I guess. part of management is realizing when you have people that work well <laughs> you encourage them you don't reprimand yeah i was like so like i'm already doing better than everyone else you yes. want me to be even better that's yes. what this today's about exactly i was when like you... way to make me feel useful so what i do i Bro. tanked it i was like next month i was like now we're gonna have something to work on <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll, you found a problem we'll give you <laughs> yeah a problem. we found a problem <laughs> yep yep exactly <laughs> Jonas just turns into Red Fox. <laughs> <laughs> you want to find a problem? <laughs> we got a problem. So, but yeah, but I can imagine like the Amazon workers going in to talk to their boss and they're like, well, yeah. Steve, you're supposed to only take 90 seconds per delivery and you've taken 94 seconds per delivery this week. To be, to be honest, Jonas, any job that's ever had that, that degree of scrutiny has always bothered me. Like me and you have both, we've worked in fast food when we were younger. Um, I would never want to work at a Subway because I don't want you to watch me make your sandwich. If I yeah. worked at Chipotle, I don't want you to watch me. Make uh, yeah, that oh, that would kill me. Like I like, yeah. like, I mean, I worked at Wendy's as a teenager, and like at least there, you you were like they could kind of see you from the drive through. Not even inside, they could kind of see you off to the side making their food. But you weren't. Yeah, yeah. like I don't want you to watch me making your food. Nah. So you can like give me tips as I'm making it. Like a little I bit more rice. <laughs> No, no, no. More chicken, please. I don't even, I don't want the scrutiny because I don't want you to be like, uh -huh, what is he doing to my sandwich? I don't even want that. Yeah. I don't want that. No. Just, just shut up, make me, let me work my magic and sh sh just get the fuck away from me, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, so any any job that's had that degree of scrutiny. I used to hate, uh, I worked at a grocery store stocking shelves. Did they have you like a pallet per night goal? Like you had to get through so many pallets? Bro, I don't know, man. I, mm, there, there, there's a lot of things I can say about that job. I, I felt like a target. But anyway, I don't know. We would just have to like, uh, you know, like oh, move. Oh, front face and Yeah, pulling. move stuff out from the, from the, uh, on the shelves and stuff, make it look nice or whatever. And, you know, it was just like customers were always there looking at you and watching yeah, you. Yeah, if I was going to be a shelf stocker, I'd like to do the late night shift where you're just working with other employees. Yeah, and I think that's even what I, I did, but still, there was like customers Yeah, you're, in the they morning. always start stocking in the last hour of the yeah. store being open yeah. or whatever. You know what's really funny, though? I, I was listening to something else. I saw, like, uh, I saw that uh, Mr. Beast has like had like <laughs> some sort of product popcorn or something and he like literally Everything. like he like put out a thing to to like his fans saying like hey i got some new product out there with displays if you're out there and you see it looking messy why don't you tidy it up for oh, me you see the it? new chocolate bar yeah and he was like so basically like hey hey fans why don't you go out there and straighten up my key i'd be like that would be like uh you know like Mr. Ruffles like, <laughs> Mr. Ruffles is out here going, nah. hey, everybody, if you're out the store, make sure you front face all the ruffles for nah, me. Not quite. Mr. Beast is a different entity, though, man. He's he's, he's I wish phenomenon. I had the money to be a philanthropist like he does. Man. Yeah. I mean, he's him. I don't know, because when you're <laughs> it's so weird because it's like he's he is so giving. And, you know, I definitely appreciate everything that he has done. Um, up until curing the blind, did you know that was? A yeah, thing? I saw. I saw he huh. yeah, like a thousand people. He like he had the the surgery to. Well, yeah. I don't think they're. I think they. I think those people are legally blind. They aren't like pure blind. Yeah, Their yeah, eyes yeah, don't yeah. work. But yeah. even still, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even still, but yeah. So even you know, up to doing that, 
But uh, when you're that giving, people start kind of like you know. Well, here's the other thing, though, and I <laughs> like under- low key begging. Yeah, but I, and I understand that's how he makes his money to be able to do this. But at the same time, when you're that giving to make a video to then put out to promote how much you're giving, it, it almost takes away some of the philanthropy behind it. Like if I went out, like if I, if I, in my good heart was like, I'm gonna go buy a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna make spaghetti. And buy, meal it up and go around and drop off a bunch of hot spaghetti meals to a bunch of homeless people. Great. But if I did that and recorded it for the YouTube channel and interviewed them and talked about how great we were. That is how we go viral. Is it? I'm sorry, Jonas. That's the way the game works nowadays, my brother. You want to go viral, you got you to gotta, you gotta show people what you do. Okay. Let's do it. Or nobody knows you do it. And I don't feel like there's really an issue with doing that, especially if the amount that he's giving away yeah, let's go. Yeah. You so. might as let me know. <laughs> Anyways, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Go to thecrazytown.com for Jonas. <gasps> Mr. Beast, hit me up. TNT. We up.